Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So here's a brand new deck profile for you guys today. Um, it's actually on Paleozoic Frogs. I've been meaning to get this out to you guys, but the ban list dropped yesterday, so I had to go back, make some adjustments for pretty much everything, including my Salamangrade deck, So, which, by the way, I'll get to that tomorrow. Or actually, I might have time today, actually, if, uh, depending on what my schedule is like. But anyway, for today, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys like a Paleozoic Frog deck. I made some adjustments, uh, again, because of the ban list. I wanted to see, like... What I could fit in more, thinking about like what will be the meta now, and yeah, I was like, this is actually a pretty powerful control deck. Um, it's pretty annoying to deal with. I'm not gonna lie, I've dueled against this deck plenty of times, so I can understand like what this deck can really do, and it's it's just fun. But yeah, I just want to show you guys my own personal build and what I felt like was the best way to play it, especially for the upcoming format. Uh, so yeah, so starting off with the main deck, got to play three Swap Frog. It's a free summon, you can discard a water monster to special summon it, and it's a foolish burrow for your frog, so you send any level 2 or lower aqua type monster from your deck to the grave. But uh, what's also cool about this card is that you can bounce back one monster you control to get an additional normal summon of a frog monster, except itself, of course, so you'd have to, like, uh, summon something else. But what's also neat is that it's not a hard once per turn, so you, you can potentially abuse this card as many times as possible. It just depends on how you want to go about it. Uh, next, three Duke Frogs. Uh, I mean, it's pretty standard. Uh, your opponent cannot select another monster for an attack, except for this one. And it's got a 2k defense, so that's pretty impressive too. Uh, when this card is sent from field to the grave, you can add one frog monster except itself um, from your deck to your hand, or from your grave back to your hand. So it's a good way to for recursion. And yeah, Duke Frog, definitely needed. Of course, you got to play two copies of Ronin Tona. You don't really need to run three. Three is a brick. But he's a free summon, just banish a frog to special summon himself. And that's generally it. He's the level 2, just gives you instant access to your uh, totally awesome. So, Ronin Toten, definitely something to consider. Uh, for my side engine, actually, I'm running three copies of Lilith. It's just an, it's a copy of Trap Trick, basically. So, you're essentially playing six copies of Trap Trick. So, I've seen some people not play this anymore. I still think you should still run Lilith, just because she gives you access to all your trap cards. Um, so. Yeah, Lilith, definitely a three of to try out. You know, if you don't like her, you know, you don't have to play her. You can run, like, more trap cards. But for me, like, I do want instant access to all my traps as fast as I possibly can, especially for the best ones. So Lilith at three, I think it's the best uh, way to go about it. And for the only hand trap I'm running is Ash Blossom. You know, it's the most generic hand trap, so I just need some extra form of disruption, especially if I'm forced to go second. So Ash Blossom definitely comes into clutch whenever you need it. Alright, so that's it for my monsters. I believe that was 14 monsters. Now we're moving on to trap cards. I'm not running a single spell in this deck, so yeah, just going straight to traps. Gotta play three trap trick. This card is nuts. You banish one normal trap from your deck, except itself. Set one card with the same name that you banished, and you can activate it on the same turn. Now keep in mind, once you use this card, you are only allowed to activate one trap for the rest of the turn. So the rest of the turn part is very key, so you can run, you can play other trap cards before you activate this one, but just bear in mind that once you play that one trap trick and set that card, that's going to be the only trap you're going to be allowed to activate. So, uh, just got to watch out for like how you go about playing this. So, don't try not to activate it too early, especially if you already have a full back row. Try to get through the rest first and then play trap trick if you need to. Uh, next, three Paleo Canadia. Uh, it's Book of Moon essentially. And the fact that pay, all the payload cards also count as monsters, that's pretty nuts. Um, anytime a normal trap is activated, you can chain by special summoning these cards right back, so it's pretty nice. Uh, three Dinomiscus, it's good for banishment. Uh, really good against like other control decks like Subterra Guru and all that stuff. You like you want to banish their cards. And yeah, Dinomiscus definitely helps with that purpose. Another good card to go with is uh, three Olenoides. Um, Pop spells and traps, which is also good for control decks, because a lot of control decks are all spell and traps. So Olenoides definitely helps out with that. And that's pretty much it for the Paleos. I'm not running Morella just because I didn't feel the need to. Again, if you don't like uh, Lilith, you could run that instead, like Morella, just to dump your traps. But for me, I just wanted to play three of each of the top three best ones, in my opinion. So, yeah. So, let's move on for the rest here. And, yeah. Okay. Next up on my lineup, three, playing three copies of Lost Wind. Uh, I feel like it's just a cheaper version of Impermanence. I don't have access to Impermanence right now, so... But Lost Wind is still really good. You can target one uh, special summon monster, negate its effects, and half its attack points, so that's really nice. And it has its own self-recursion, too, so... 
Definitely a good card. Uh, three compulsory, just because, you know, it bounces back monsters that can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Like, let's say you're up against heroes. Got to get rid of that malicious bane, so compulsory definitely helps with that. Or thunder dragons. Well, actually, in this case, the only thunder dragon that you have to worry about is just titan. And yes, I've already seen some new builds on Thunder Dragons now without Colossus. The deck can still play very strongly. It's, at this point, it's just an Appaloosa Titan Turbo. Which, if I have time, I'll do a deck on that later. But for now, I'm just going to focus on the ones that I play more. Uh, moving on. Uh, for Counter Traps, I'm actually only running like one Counter Trap. In which case, three of them. Three copies of Solemn Judgment. This is mainly just to deal with like Denkos or like any form of back, back removal like so, uh, Twin Twisters or Cosmic Cyclone. So Solemn Judgment definitely helps. Or if you just want to cancel out your opponent's summons, that helps too. Uh, I'm running two Crackdown. Uh, oops, I didn't have room for a third, so but two is just fine. Just to take control of your opponent's monsters and you can link them off later. So yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, this is just for like any Spellerland deck or even Pendulums. Even Pendulums took a, a hefty hit during the ban list, but I'm sure like uh, there'll be people out there who are going to figure out a way to break the deck. Knowing Triff, he's going to do that himself. Uh, playing two copies of Anti-Spell Fragrance, you know, it always comes into clutch. It's also pretty good against the Sub-Terrors, too, because, you know, they want to activate that Hidden City or uh, Pot of Extravagance, and Anti-Spell Fragrance just slows them down by a degree. Uh, and for just any spells in general, Imperial Order. Since I don't run a single spell, this card does not phase me by any means, so Imperial Order is definitely nice. And if you spring this during uh, your opponent's standby phase... And let's say he had a super poly or whatever. Well, this basically stops super poly before he gets a chance to get activated. But of course, if he chains off of it, well, then I'm screwed. Because <laughs> the only card he could probably uh, activate it would be, uh, well, the only monster you could summon off of it is Mud Dragon of the Swamp if he had the chance to. Uh, anyway, now we're moving on to the extra deck. Uh, since it's a frog deck, naturally you got to run three copies of Totally Awesome. Actually, the only real expensive card in this deck. It's... Uh, like maybe 20 bucks I think right now it might have dropped by now I'm not sure but uh, this is like the only card that you have to invest on and honestly it's definitely worth it because you know uh, it negates it resets and the fact that it can push some frogs during your opponent's standby phase is really nice and also it recurs too so totally awesome definitely an amazing card uh, running one of each of the Paleozoic Xyz monster Opa Binia I think that's how you pronounce it uh, it's unaffected by monster effects. Oh, which, by the way, I forgot to mention. The Paleozoic monsters are unaffected by monster effects. Um, this one lets you activate trap cards from your hand, so that's really good. So basically, every trap in your hand becomes a hand trap at that point. And also, uh, this card has exceeds, as a trap card has exceeds material. You can detach one material, add one Paleo trap card from your deck to your hand. So it's a good way to search it off. Uh, next, uh, an, um, I, you know what? Forget it. I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that. Name we'll just call it the uh, the uh, bluish purple paleo whatever. Anyway, un also unaffected by monster effects. Uh, once per turn, if a trap is sent from your spell or trap card zone to the grave, except during damage step, you can excavate the top card of your deck. And if you do, even if it's a trap, you can add it to your hand. Otherwise, just send it to the grave. But again, the entire deck is trap basically, so you should be just fine. And once during other player's turn, uh, this has a trap as exceeds material. You can detach one, then target one card on the field and destroy it. So that's pretty nice. It's also good for, just to, for free spot removal. Now moving on to Lynx. Uh, three Me Star Boy, you know, just to bump up your water monsters by 500 attack points. So it's really good. And it's, again, if it's like all the other water monsters, you should have some recursion with this. I'm also running some Nightmares, Phoenix, Cerberus, and Unicorn. You know, spot removal is always important. Now this one I'm actually giving a chance, and it's actually pretty good for this deck so far. Unchained Abomination. So this card just pops cards like crazy. Whenever a, a card uh, is popped on your side of the field except by an effect of an Unchained monster, um, you can pop one card your opponent controls. Um, whenever a monster destroyed a monster in battle, or whenever another monster is destroyed by battle, you can target one card on the field, destroy it, and at the end phase, you can just destroy one card your opponent controls. So that's just nuts. Like this card could pop three cards essentially in one turn. So... Yeah, Unchained Abomination is just the nuts. And for the only other Link form running is uh, Boral Sword Dragon. Now for my last few cards, these are actually for Waking the Dragon since I cited out. Uh, running one Ultimate Falcon, Naturia Exterio, and of course, one of my personal favorites, Super Heavy Samurai Steam Train King. Uh, this thing can also pop cards, and the fact that he can attack in defense mode is nuts, and he banishes every spell and trap. 
in the graveyards just to burn your opponent for 200 points of damage for each card that gets banished. So if you need something to help you win in time, uh, Train King will definitely help. So give it a shot. All right, for a side deck, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm running three Nibiru. It's still important because we still got we're still gonna have combo decks naturally. Uh, also good against the combo. It's uh, Inspector Border. You know, you definitely need to stay in control. Even though with MR5, I know some people think Inspector Border is going to be bad. I don't think it's going to be that bad, honestly. I think it'd still be a pretty cool card to try running. And it's a 2k base deck, so why not? Uh, Heavy Storm Duster for any other back row strategy. As well as, uh, well, Waking the Dragon. Like, this was mainly for the Dragos. Like, if they pop my back row and I happen to pop this card, I get one of my free extra deck monsters. But even then, you know, people are still going to run some form of back row removal, especially that for some reason Red Reboot went to one. I'm like, why they put that to one? It's not, was it really that big of a problem? But, oh well. Well, I, I'm sure I'll come back to three at one point. And then lastly, uh, three copies of Evenly Matched, also against the control strategies. Uh, you know, because if you're up against a control, two control decks against each other, it's grindy as crap. So you definitely just need the edge uh, in some ways or another, and Evenly Matched will definitely help you out with that. Well... Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and just stay tuned for the combo video, and I'll see you guys until then.